what you'd call now as you're saying who umenunua apartment iko kwa hewa that is not correct because currently now in Kenya under the new laws you can get your sectional property title for that apartment which is in the air which will be located using GPS that is how you get there its real positioning index positioning in a map of the apartment so google maps can take you to house yes. number 23b yes now peter kibuki is one of the most brilliant minds i've ever interacted with when it comes to matters that real estate nyumba yenye hauishi ndani it the trend where is higher than yenye unaishi ndani hell ni gani ndio the best strategy between renting and owning a home renting when it comes to a home Hey Peter. Alafu kwa shule wajatembea peke yake he comes alongside another brilliant mind kwa real estate anaitwa Helen Wangoi. We have moved from where let me say the older generation yenye ilikuwa it's either you have a title deed it's either you have a, a title for a unit. You as King Wangoi what you do is just invest your money and then you'll be getting your dividend. Peter Kibugi is a real estate strategist. If you are to advise me as an investor nataka kwenda kuanzisha my off plan project depends on the profit do you want to hold it do you want it to be capped on the development where you will make money or will you translate this to retaining units in that development hello professor helen wangoi is a real estate analyst you can get into real estate with a less than a million bob kuna vitu kama rates get 20 or 30 of your friends bring them to the table have this idea on paper and then uh, when it comes to owning and renting uh, i would say also i believe by now mshajwa anytime we are doing an episode like this one a sabu lazima it makes sense a certain apartment that you could rent for 40000 the mortgage was 84000 84000 for 20 years how does 84000 per month for 20 years make sense over renting the property for 34 or 40000 when you need it when you buy a house at 2.7 million off plan right that means for the 2.7 the developer has already made their profit sindio but this same same house in like say 2 3 years it will be 4.5 million where is this margin coming from we also need to know why other people fail in a business that has been described as a sure bet this is the part which most people don't know you can go and negotiate the terms For reasons we have been seeing in Kenya the interest rate uh, are rising. Right now we are at around 22%. I'm your host Dr. Kingori and here's another reason to stay subscribed to our channel. Come how just subscribe. Now's a good time to hit subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. Also please feel free to like, comment and share our content. Your good vibes reach as many people as possible. Let's qualify the statement real estate in guesswork. Umenishtua sana ukisema hivyo cause eh what do you say it's guesswork na my first conversation with you ama any conversation ni mai kwa nayo na wewe ya story of float inakuanga very focused na calculated. But uh, what I can say real estate is your guesswork as in that sense I was saying mm-hmm. it's fun and innovative. Mm-hmm. So the guessing part is at the innovation part. Yes. Yeah, because you come up with an idea, you conceptualize an idea on paper, mm-hmm. translate it. Okay. Say you're building or doing an investment. Okay. And now you have a final product. Yes. In the case of where we are building. Yes. Yeah. So it's more of innovation and it's very fun. Okay. Watching it mature from just a paper idea mm. to a full uh, building or estate. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, Helen, yes. as an analyst, uh, qua real estate, what does it mean to be an analyst? Uh, an analyst in real estate uh, ina yes. uh, various things. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing ni ati ukiingia kwa real estate, uh, yes. you don't just get into real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh there's the math part of it uh, the math the math part of it mm-hmm. because you okay, have an idea for real estate uh, uh, regardless of the um what kind of real estate that you're in lazima kukuwa na math that's making sense so uh, because purely uh 
whether it's an investment or a business, carrying it, uh, real estate as a business or uh, an investment, you have to do your math. So mm -hmm. that's why the analyst comes in, in terms of uh, unanalyze, as the words suggest, mm -hmm. uh, uh, bona nifanye shamba instead of kujenga. Shamba as in bona ni nunue shamba. Shamba, ni use shamba. Yes. So, that's still real estate. Vio biashara ya kununua na kuuza. Okay. Ni biashara. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get, yeah. I get. Ya yeah, yes. ni biashara. Mbona nifanye hii, ama mbona nifanye kujenga, ni bae shamba, ni jenge, ni use nyumba. Okay. Yeah, so as an analyst, unaangalia, uh, uh, basically unaangalia hoya hoya uh, uh, hesabu ni wapi inakupatia more benefit ama ni gani benefit inakupatia benefit in terms of profits than the others than the other na pia unaangalia analyst unaangalia ni wapi risk iko mingi kuliko mahali kwingine because mm. real estate uh, ni broad okay yeah so unaangalia hizo categories zote za real estate mm. ni gani iko na more risk kuliko ye, ile nyingine Mm. Ni gani na take short time kuliko ile nyingine? Ni okay. gani iko na more profit kuliko ile nyingine? Ah. Na ni gani itapatia value end user kuliko ile nyingine? So hiyo ndio process ya analyst ku analyze the various uh, aspects zenye ziko kwa real estate ama mm. let me call them net vehicles <coughs> in real estate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So mm, real estate is in one uh, we'll break them down okay. but real estate is one of the businesses i am convinced that we have a lot of people who look like they are making money but they are actually making nothing am i right you're correct because uh, it's dependent on the type of real estate you're doing type yes okay are you building houses to sell mm -hmm. or rental income mm -hmm. are you buying land uh, speculatively are you land banking are you doing land subdivisions? So it depends mm. on which real estate you are in. Mm. Yes. Okay. Where is money? So, mimi na, nataka understand how money works. I've done the mathematics here rentals. Uh, and when you go back to funding, uh, I'm inclined to believe that very few people in Kenya have the capacity ya kuchukua pesa waende wa jenge na ayo cash. Right? And then we also have... Uh, Mimi na yetu may discuss the return on investment in one of your properties on Kirawa Road. The conversation was you guarantee an 8% return on investment. 8 right? to 10%. 8 to 10. Yes. But let's, on the safe side, 8%. Yes. Hakuna bank inaza kupea loan ya kurudisha na 8%. Ni ukweli. And that's where we ask, or that's where you, the innovation comes about. Mm -hmm. Why don't you pull resources? Why don't, you, why don't we come together? Kingori, with your X amount, with my Y, mm -hmm. put it together, and we formulate the Z together. Break it down for us. Uh, let's say, for example, a property, it a cost, uh, common rental property. Mm -hmm. Let's give it an average cost, your land. 15 million. 15 million. Yeah. That's in a location. Yeah, yeah. A prime, prime location. Prime location, yeah. 15 million. Yeah. Size? That's quarter of an acre. Quarter of an acre. Yes. How many units can we put up here? Let's talk about 70. Oh, 70 units. Mm. Uh, now, how much money are you making per month, per unit? Per month, per unit, you're talking about an average of 20,000. As 20, the net. 000. Yeah, so gross of 24,000, 25,000. Ah, and any one bedroom, two bedroom? This, ah. well, this I'm looking at uh, studio, one bedroom. Studio and bedroom. Yes. Ah, yeah. So 70 units, right? Uh, yes. If you make a, a, a net of 20,000, yes. for example, yes. a prime location. Yes. So uh, how are you col collecting an average monthly rent of like 1.4 million? An average of 1.4 million. But Niko Shua, to do 1.4, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 1.4. Uh, how much does it cost to put together property Kameyo? To put up the property. Mm. You're talking of uh, all in cost of 60, 65 million. 65 million? Yes. Ah, 65 M. 65 M. In Amanisha, first of all, to measure dispel Ile Ruma Yetu, uh, see Ruma, um, Ile idea Yetu ya uh, investment kwa bank ju 65 million. Yes. Ata ukipata bank lenient, wakupati 14%. Yes. Bado utapika ndu, sindio? Ya ni ukweli. Aya. So, uh, 65 million if you are to pull resources, you're looking at, uh, let's say, 
65 million is plus cost of land. Yes. See, you're looking at um, how many people? 10 people, kila mtu atoe around 7 million. They're about relatively, or 20 people, kila mtu atoe 3.5. That is much easier to raise. Aha. Uh-huh. Alafu, when, when the rental income starts streaming in, yes. sasa mnakuja mnakuwa na problem ya kugawa na 1.4 million among 20 people. No. You see, the 20 of you will be 20 individual shareholders or stakeholders in that building. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So cumulatively, the best way to do it, uh, you've lost all the costs you have. Yes. Why don't you hold this money in, say, a money market fund yeah, where it will still earn some more interest mm-hmm. and have a dividend payout at the end, an annual dividend payout. Okay. Yes. Why do I need to go through... Uh, Re, nini, tenants to get to uh, money market, why shouldn't I just go to money market directly? Before to make a conversation, please allow me to tell you something about our partners. When you put the idea to make this possible, that is quality of good vibes. So your story, please allow me to tell you something about Lux Company Limited. Unataka kujenga, especially rental, apartment. Ukona ka 50 by 100, yako maali ama ukona plot, unataka proper use of space, design poor, you need to get in touch with Rax Company Limited. Rax Company Limited was uh, founded by Maurice Karioki. Maurice Karioki ni a design and build architect who has been a guest on this platform. Na wale wa some interact na yu episode, wamekubali, wanasema, I wanna be a feedback of how real Morris is. So you can get in touch with Morris and the team at Rax Company Limited through the contact details then you can click up on screen. And uh, I recommend uh, Morris and the team because at Akaziao in Onikana, you can find their complete project for website here, Rax Company Limited, and you link to make up on the description. So, unataka a contractor who is trusted, legit, na akona work experience yenye itakusaidia kutembea jani yako ya construction professionally. Kindly consider, your, con- consider uh, getting in touch with Rax Company Limited and consider yourself plugged. Why do I need to go through uh, re- nini tenants to get to uh, money market? Why shouldn't I just go to money market directly? It's just it's a, a revenue of views where you can also increase. The, you can grow the 1.4 which you've collected mm. and sum it up to 2 million. Mm-hmm. So when you're asking about dividing mkiwa to 20, you mm-hmm. divide 1.4, now you can say what to 20 dividing 2 million. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I've just looked at how to multiply this money so that your division is easier. So what to 20, uh, still again, uh, if na maybe you said na mathematics, mm-hmm. what to 20, mm-hmm. in fact, cha, what to 20, mm-hmm. mugawane, you mm-hmm. met 65 million. Okay, yes. Uh, isn't it a better advantage if what to 20 minutes at all you mm-hmm. 65 million mm-hmm. kwa money market alafu mugawane you do without going through real estate no and and now here is the beautiful part of uh, before we get to the money market yes. fund uh, yes why don't we have an asset that is generating this income in your tumepeleka money market fund because Yes, it's correct to chukwe the 65 million to yake money market fund. But mm-hmm. the question is, to keep up the income from the money market fund, mm-hmm. do we have the asset? Mm-hmm. We don't have an underlying asset. To kwa nile pesa yetu tu, to ta withdraw my the interest, to ta kwa nile, kama nile 65 million, do ita kwa tu 65 million, yetu iko money market fund in an interest. So to nagawana interest. But mm-hmm. capital yet, let me call it the initial capital in to invest, it remains the 65 million, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. despite the fact in an interest. Yes. But to kujana the 65 million yet in to pull funds from uh, various people to me, to me jenga, to okay. kona asset, which uh, in appreciate, na bado in generate this income, in to make a money market, and in generate more income. Mm-hmm. So the issue becomes here, ni ati, uh, uh, it's not only real estate, but in a kwani asset, in a generate income, of which on that income, we can also push it to the money market to earn more income. Okay. Yes, okay. because the 65, to my own shamba yetu ni 15 million, and all our all, all in cost in 65 million. But by the time to namaliza yu kujenga, njengo, like uh, Peter does, uh, utapata mm. in that one year or nine months, uh, mm. yu mjengo yetu, value yaki itakua imeenda juu. 
Mm. Yes, yeah, so that's the difference, yeah. But let's do a pesa to a money market fund. Why don't we have an asset in a generate income in a tuna peleka money market fund then in a gener in a endelea ku generate income? Okay. Yes. Uh, I understand. So, w w for example, you know, um, there's one problem we are ignoring in this mathematics. Mm. The idea of getting people to work in groups. Correct. Right? How do you solve that? Assuming that's the first model we are discussing in terms of to raise funds. Uh, raising funds is very easy mm -hmm. because I believe the first test, <coughs> get 20 or 30 of your friends, bring them to the table, have this idea on paper, sell it to them. Mm -hmm. And the first way that you'll know that there is commitment from the group of friends. They can be buddies. We've seen chamas form. Uh, actually, there is a chama I'm dealing with, which they are buddies who came together from a car wash. Mm -hmm. They all started meeting, opened a WhatsApp group of the car wash, and mm -hmm. it metamorphosis to a chama, mm -hmm. which right now they have assets, and it's two, three years down the line. Mm -hmm. So chamas can form anywhere, and these mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. can be found anywhere. So once you have them and you have them on the table, mm -hmm. uh, the simple litmus test to search a uh, chama, an investment group, is one. Just tell people, I need people to put in uh, 20,000 for one year. That's 240,000 mm. per member. Mm. The next meeting we will have is this date, 12 months to come. And you give them the account number. Mm. So the people who will commit and save mm. monthly, and by the time you're coming to the meeting, say the 240, mm. and you find yourselves your 15, those are the 15 serious people you can work with mm -hmm. who share the same vision as you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, this is assuming we are going with unity, we are going with shared vision. Yes. Uh, what advice do you have for the selfish investor? Ule mwenye, nataka mimi, I want to go it alone. Is it possible or is it not? Because we've already established that borrowing to fund a real estate project does not make sense. Uh, for the selfish investor who wants to go in all alone, Mm -hmm. All they'll have, all the, the waste they will have is on time. Mm -hmm. It will take him 20 to 20, uh, 15 to 20 years to come up with that money to do an investment. It will take you one year in a group to do the same investment. So they'll have lost 14 years mm -hmm. of waiting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So time, time factor. Working in numbers gives yeah. you the benefit of time. Yes. Ah, okay. He. <laughs> How do you calculate a return on investment? Okay, so uh, when you're calculating the return on investment, uh, basically, uh, uh, let me put it in a layman's language. Eh? Mm. Uh, it's like uh, the number of years it takes you to recoup your initial uh, uh, capital invested. Number of years. Number of years. Okay. So we are taking uh, it, uh, the income that you're getting, let's say on a monthly basis, mm. You annualize it, okay. that means uh, you're multiplying it by 12 uh, months, mm. then you divide by their initial investment. So that gives you uh, the number of years uh, that it will take you to recoup your initial money. Okay. Yes, so that's basically, uh, in a layman's language, is to say the number of years it will take you to recoup back your entire amount that you invested. A hundred percent. Yes. And for real estate, yes. most of the math I have done, yes. even with people I've spoken to, yes. even my mentors were stories afloat. Yes. Uh, real estate has been touted as not a very viable investment. Yes. Uh, when it comes to putting your money, mm -hmm. because uh, on average, real estate you can uh, the average return on investment time is um, 10 years. 10 years. 10 to 15 years. Yes. yes. For the most part. For the most part. Yes, you could have a lisha pesa. In one way, in the same mm. uh, one fact that people ignore is that uh, for an investment to make sense to you, uh, and what actually what we focus as our company is for people to think long term. Uh, and when people calculate uh, the income that you're getting, uh, versus the investment that you made. Uh, they ignore the fact that you can place your, the income that you're generating. Instead, you kuchukua hiyo pesa, your rental income, your monthly, mm. na kukula na kuyolo here and there. Uh, why don't you put it in somewhere else where it's also an interest? What that helps you is mm. that in a push down the number of uh, years down. And that's what uh, the, the 
uh, let me call it, I don't know if we call it the sixth wonder of, uh, of the one, the compounding compound interest. interest. Yes. yes. So if, uh, if you're not greedy and your rental income, you're able to put it in, let's say, a money market fund or invest in a bond and, or, and everything. So your 10 years will come down to around uh, 6.5 years, which is a good return compounded. So your advice for a landlord is for some time pretend like you don't own the property. Exactly. Because that, uh, not own the property, you can uh, share, uh, put sh a share of it. Eh? Let's mm -hmm. say if your, uh, your total rental income is uh, uh, 200k, why don't you uh, put 100k in the money market fund? Mm -hmm. So that way it will make sense. But now mm -hmm. we are saying it's, it doesn't make sense because we are not looking uh, uh, to in reinvest we are not reinvesting our income. Mm -hmm. So we are taking all our income and eating it. And okay. then we are dreaming that real estate doesn't have money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what uh, that teaches us uh, in real estate, you have to be disciplined because to acquire that discipline that we can 200K, but sita guza yote, ama nitaguza half, then the other I, I, re, I reinvest. Huh? In this idea, your, the period, in your own period, it cuts down. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Peter, the, the first property yenye tuli interact now na tuka engage nayo was Kirawa Road. Yes. Before you work a moto kabisa, yes. uh, wakati you had under 100 units, I believe. Yes. And uh, where mulikuwa munauza an off-plan one bedroom for 2.7. Yes. After, after memaliza kujenga, how much were you selling it for? 3.2. 3.2. Yes. Alafu rent ilikuwa, rent ilikuwa 20? 22,000. 22? Ilikuwa 22 ama 20 then? 20. Yeah. And it has grown to now 22. Sawa. At that time yeah. ilikuwa 22. 20. So as a, uh, oh, for someone who bought it, let's talk about someone who buys it at 3.5. Mm. But the rental income, let's give it 22. Mm. Peter na isabu yako ya pesa. Mm. How many things can you do with 3.5 million? Than can give you as in does that isn't that a mismatch spending three point five million to make twenty thousand in a month? That uh, in your eyes is a mismatch, but in my eyes, it's uh, if you have three point five today mm. and uh, last year you had three point five, you have three point five today. You've invested in stocks, you have insurance, mm. you have bonds, government bonds. Uh, you're diversifying. Mm -hmm. You're not putting all your eggs in one basket mm, mm. and saying, I only do money market mm. or I only do fixed deposits. Mm. So you're diversifying. Mm. And uh, as Helen says, uh, as an investment analyst is that, uh, or an investment manager mm. is that you also need assets which you can hold on to. And these assets are appreciating in value. So for me, looking at it at 3.5 is going to a waste where you're only collecting 22,000 mm. uh, a month to me, that's fairly, uh, fairly well. As she's saying, it's also patience. Real estate requires patience <coughs> mm -hmm. and requires you to be very sober minded. Mm -hmm. Why don't you collect this 22,000? Mm -hmm. The 3.5 you had it, you didn't have a use of it mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So put it back in the, in your account, collect it, hold it in a fixed deposit or a money market, mm -hmm. collect it over time. At the end of the nine years, mm. yeah, where you'd have recouped your 3.5, you will have uh, recouped 3.5 in cash plus the interest, and you'll be having an asset which is now valued at over 4 million. The same houses which were then valued at 3.2 at the end of the project, and someone who bought at 2.7 are the same houses which the uh, buyers are reselling now at 4.5, 4.8 million. So it has also appreciated in value. In okay. a period of more than, of less than 24 months. Okay. Yes. So does this mean then, in this case, that there is an age of people who are, are advised to invest in real estate? In this sense, um, a young person uh, with 3.5 million has enough time to experiment. Na kutafuta kujua, ah, okay, uh, if I get, there, there are ideas then you can invest 3.5 and probably get 5% per month. Right? Yeah. Sindio? Mm -hmm. uh, and get 5% of that amount of money per month. Per month. Sindio? Yeah. Uh, if you have that, now uendele uki diversify, mm -hmm. right? And you stay true to that investment. Mm -hmm. um, by the time uh, age catches up with you, mm -hmm. unaza kimbia kwa real estate, mm -hmm. 
where your money grows slowly uzeke na pesa yako okay um what what actually we advise is that uh, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have like a limitation in terms of age uh, mm -hmm. though we have seen trends and even the statistics show that what when you want to our meritaya no vata they are skeptical about uh getting to real estate and unless, not unless they are looking for something they could leave behind to their to their kids uh, uh what we say is uh start early as possible but also don't ignore the fact that you can also diversify see ati ukuja pia uweke pesa yako yote kwa mm. real estate it's also good to diversify but again uh as an, from now uh, to the investor uh, if now like now we have very various uh, other places that you can invest in Azania, especially they are promising quick returns uh, even to the rights of 30% and all that uh, the issue becomes now narrows down to the discipline <coughs> so if you're not disciplined from the time you're young and this I'm talking to people who have started earning Uh, their first salary and all that uh, if you're not disciplined enough and have patience to get into real estate because uh, it's not only limited to that large amount of money mm. to target into the various categories kuna vitu kama rates uh, which you can all get into real estate uh, investment with uh, even less than a million bob it's not we're not talking about uh, only the 3.5 to own a house you can get into real estate with at less than a million bob to get into real estate uh, see lazima ukwe we have moved from where uh, let me say the older generation yenye ilikuwa it's either you have a title deed it's either you have a, a title for a unit so we have moved to from there to we to come let me call it uh, digital uh, the uh, the certificate of ownership so you get into an investment vehicle mm -hmm. this investment vehicle like amazia is doing real estate so uh, the investment vehicle icona over a thousand people mm -hmm. the, like they like vinya tulikuwa tunapea an example like you can do a individual project so this investment vehicle you as kingori what you do is just invest your money mm -hmm. and then you'll be getting your dividend so kama ni hiyo uh, kama uko na 500k ama a million bob you'll get in a dividend but what uh, we are not it's like how you would have done the rental income so your dividend is uh, is from the rental income but you don't have a particular house you don't atini yangu uh, yeah, exactly. unaenda upige kifuli yeah so wewe uko tu na share holding kwa this investment vehicle mm -hmm. and this is the real estate investment vehicle mm -hmm. uh, then you invest your money Uh, then the real estate uh, investment vehicle does uh, the building does the management and everything mm -hmm. then we will unapata dividend at the end of the month so okay. that's how uh, now uh, um, the real estate have evolved uh, to incorporate everyone mwenye kona pesa ndogo na mwenye kona pesa mingi so i would say start uh, especially for the young people start early you don't have to go all in big ukisikia okay, nyumba ni 3.5 actually uh, like peter has mentioned uh, you get chamas like uh, chamas and uh, the various payment plans and all that with that we have ni watu wameshikana wamefungua kampuni yao but they are purchasing that one unit uh, wakiwa like a group of people so mm -hmm. you don't need to raise that entire amount of money asking ori but rather than this chama okay but uh, again i insist the discipline is what is key okay. but uh, we encourage people to also uh, venture into other areas and especially for people to get uh, informed informed before getting to these other uh, investments okay yes sir peter we say my touch on something yes also weighing the risk which is involved mm -hmm. you might have the 3.5 and earn 5% per month but burn the entire 3.5 here at least you'll be left with an asset a tangible asset a real asset mm -hmm. yes uh, so also weigh your risk in the investment okay yeah uh, there is also something we are forgetting uh, the reason why people now uh, consider real estate as an old school investment is because uh, nowadays we are doing mathematics at 100% occupancy yes right uh, now that's not always the case it is indeed because uh, 
it cannot let's look at the type of investments we do uh, talk about like the space we are in mm. where we develop at uh, amazia you find that the niche we are in we are in the lower end of the middle class where we are providing studios one bedrooms these are houses ranging from 15000 to 30000 houses ranging from 15000 to 30000 so so our mm. occupancy during good or bad economic times is always at 100% we are at your midpoint when mm-hmm. it's good times people migrate upwards you move upwards you want to move to a house worth 40000 in bad times you're downsizing or cutting down on your budget mm-hmm. in tough economic times when we have to tighten our belts mm-hmm. so you go look at your rent you are paying 40000 and you say i want to now pay half that amount mm-hmm. 20000 you will mm-hmm. fall back where i'm providing the houses so you are the transition between yes. happiness and suffering you can call it that way mm-hmm. yes so i will give i will give you an assurity that the investment i can give you you will always be at 100% occupancy Okay. And this investment I take care of your investment it's a, it's your passive investment I make it as passive enough for you because I will manage for you mm-hmm. yeah I'll manage for you the tenant I'll manage for you your investment I'll manage for you your asset the house mm-hmm. yeah so I'll both do the property management on your behalf that is the letting out and I'll do the facility management that is the common repairs painting and everything I have all, I have all, I always subscribe to the idea that real estate is a sure bet investment right but when you go to the auction papers nowadays you find uh real estate properties being auctioned right and i'm talking i know you'll explain uh something along the lines here uh, they probably did not invest in the right market but then again uh you see a property in a prime location and that fits the bill being auctioned necessarily is not the case so this person took out in most cases if you look at those uh, properties they have <coughs> collaterals for loans and the loan money has been injected in businesses <coughs> okay most of these people have either done businesses where due to the economic times the business hasn't taken off so the bank comes knocking asking for the money they say they loaned you 10 million what did you give us your collateral mm-hmm. a home in a Uh, Porsche estate mm. others have worked with say mm. even where payments have been delayed and mm. we know of the cases where uh, such cases are happening but the bank wants to recover its money so they'll okay. go after the collateral yes so that has been the cases if you borrow money against your property yes. and the venture yes. you borrowed against yes. fails fails that has been the case for all those that you're seeing in the even in the high end estates okay yeah it's not that it's an investment gone wrong Okay okay yeah. okay ah. mm-hmm. I believe our viewers are talking on different arguments come mm-hmm. probably there's also a case yeah you borrow money to finance real estate and then unaenda unakutwa na shock that kumbe pesa iko vile uko unafikiria in our as a kind of but in smaller cases unaona bado utakuwa umetumia ile nyumba kama collateral kwenda into that business yeah. so you borrowed money ukaenda ukanunua shamba pahali speculatively mm. ili umesikia bypass inataka kupita mm. ama expressway mpya hii mpya inapita everyone mm. is buying right now speculatively there mm. so comes about unapata that hapa jayeko interchange hapo mm. as earlier designed so unapata your land to access your land has now be moved from the initial 15 kilometers when you went to buy it to do subdivision to now 45 kilometers So that venture goes down that way. So umeacha na shamba na loan ya bank. Mm. Bila watu unaweza uzia as a business. So what's your advice for people who speculate at a ah, niaje there's a college inakuja kujengwa hapa sasa hapa this is now is a ripe market for bed sitter. Don't speculate using don't speculate or buy that land using a loan. So real estate cannot work with borrowing that is from experience <laughs> not really mm. uh one thing to add uh, to, to what peter is saying is uh real estate is quite illiquid mm-hmm. that means uh, 
uh, especially for people who are speculating. So you speculate and then assume by the time you need that money, it will be easy to get a buyer for that asset. Mm. It's not as liquid as other uh, asset classes. Okay. So uh, it's possible to do the borrowing, but now that there comes the analytics part of it. You have to structure your borrowing in a very good manner. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have been seeing in Kenya, the interest rates uh, are, are rising. Right now we are at around 22%. Yeah, yeah, twenty two percent for the bank loans. Mm -hmm. I think for the mortgage we are at around uh, fifteen percent. But now, before you get that loan, have you structured your loan? Like, uh, have you done your math that I'm getting X amount of money? Mm -hmm. This is the interest rate. Uh, can I be able to negotiate my interests with the bank? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. uh, can I get a fixed rate? What is my repayment plan? Can I ex uh, ex um, extend my payment period? So uh, before getting that loan, uh, you need to structure that uh, repayment uh, mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. and ask yourself, is this really the uh, best option? Uh, am I able, if I've, I have another uh, asset, am mm -hmm. I able to still get that loan uh, using mm -hmm. that asset, uh, which is more of uh, an equity release uh, to get uh, if you have another asset which is generating income, mm. so that they structure it as an equity release. Mm. But yes, it has been working, but you have to structure it. And another problem is that you get people, um, especially with the borrowing, uh, you borrow 60 million, you qualify for the 60 million, the interest rate is 20%. <coughs> but people or companies, you have seen uh, people or companies which who diversify the use of the money. Unasema, oh, I borrowed 65 million, but mm -hmm. nikifika kwa ground, uh, nyumba kujenga and all that, it only cost 40 million. He 25 million nyingine, hata nipeleke mahali kuingine. And it's mm -hmm. not generating income. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I can say borrowing works. You have to structure it well, negotiate with the bank on the interest rate, uh, have a plan to repay. And uh, especially when you're not able for the scenario Peter gave of people who have uh, taken a loan against the asset, and go to the business. If the business is not working, mm. go back to the bank. This is the part which most people don't know. You can go renegotiate the terms, restructure the loan, mm. so that you are not uh, a victim of now getting auction. But the borrowing works. It's only uh, a, a bad thing that uh, in Kenya, the interest rates are raising and raising. And okay. also, we uh, it becomes, uh, we don't have, um, many other sources of funding. It's either uh, borrowing or equity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Borrowing or equity. Yes. Okay. Um, Peter, in Kenya, that's just a commercial property, right? Uh, uh, before we talk about off plan, what's the most realistic strategy for home ownership for an individual? Wachana na enye mnaungana to go to go mtengeneze pesa and this gets us into the conversation of which one is the best strategy between um into the best strategy between renting and owning a home renting when it comes to a home owning is the best owning yes uh -huh. because a home this is where you're going to live mm -hmm. big large part of your life mm -hmm. yeah this is where you now come up with your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a shelter. It's one of a basic commodity that you want to provide. Mm -hmm. Not only to yourself, but even to your family. Mm -hmm. The best way to finance that home is through mortgages. Hey, Peter. And the way you will calculate your mortgage is you have to be very realistic. How much rent can I afford? So the same mortgage you're going to take will be capped on the rent which you can afford to pay. And that yeah. way you will own a home. You will not. I'll explain. In Nairobi, first of all, yes. if you live here, uh, I've done mathematics um, around, um, when was this? Six, six years ago, I was tempted to go that route. And I did the mathematics. Uh, a certain apartment that you could rent for 40000 the mortgage was 84,000. 
84,000 for 20 years. How does 84,000 per month for 20 years make sense of renting the property for 34 or 40,000 when you need it? That case, there has to be, there was a mismatch. How so? Either an undervaluation or an overvaluation of the same apartment. Because it should fit easily into the money that the rent translates to what you should be paying for a mortgage. Kenya, Kenya mortgages are super expensive. And to add on to that, the I don't believe Kenya is big on equ equity on houses, for example. You understand? Alafu, uh, we always talk about property, property being overvalued. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Kama, I was to ask you, when you buy a house at 2.7 million off plan, right? Yes. That means for the 2.7, the developer has already made their profit. Yes. Senior. But this same, same house in like, say, two, three years, it will be 4.5 million. Where is this margin coming from? How do we, how do we justify the growth in value? Of the building. Mm, of the apartment. Of the apartment itself. Mm. So this comes one or basis of uh, valuation which we use uh, is the inflation rate. So we mm. take the basic indicator of an inflation rate, <coughs> of the but right now we are at between 4 to uh, 10%. Yes. So we even work with the uh, lower side of it, 4%. So it has to appreciate in value using the inflation rate. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the other, the other appreciation that comes into an apartment mm -hmm. is the amenities surrounding it. How is the access to that apartment? How is the road? Is it Cabro paved? Mm. Are you still on a Maram road? Mm -hmm. Thirdly, mm. is how efficient is your building? Have you cut down the cost by putting in solar, for mm -hmm. example? Mm. So you're talking about someone having a zero uh, power bill mm. and leveraging on solar. Mm. So those are the small value adds which also appreciate the value of an asset. What okay. surrounds it? Mm. Yeah. You also believe that uh, owning a home is better than renting? Yes. And actually, I want to go back to that concept that you were asking the mismatch. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, uh, there's uh, the uh, overvaluation of the unit. Mm -hmm. And also, that's the basis that you, as an individual who wants to get that unit, uh, is uh, you should use. So if I'm not, uh, how much are you willing to pay uh, for that unit in that particular area because there's the aspect of the type of unit and the area that you are in. And then uh, when it comes to owning and renting, uh, I would say also there's, there's a bigger, there's uh, two ways to look at it. Because uh, one, about location, and two, uh, it's about the management. For instance, uh, like uh, the apartments that we do, you get that management is done. Uh, the cleaning is taken care of and all that is taken care of. Huh? Mm -hmm. So for you owning a, uh, a house, huh? yes, it's uh, luxurious and all that. Huh? Are you the one who is taking care of it? So if uh, you have to um, uh, uh, keep the, the, the grounds, you have to do the cleaning, you have to uh, maybe employ a security guard and all that, if you factor all those, all those costs, apart from now buying, factor all those costs, plus what you have, uh, you have the opportunity cost of now having that unit. So we are talking, I'm paying a mortgage of 80K, but over and above 80K, there's this extra cost of the security guard, the cleaning and all that. So essentially, uh, the cost per month is, is translating to 150000 versus renting. So that's where the balance you check. Huh? If mm -hmm. the month is, uh, is not turning, that means it's better to rent. And if the, you can manage your cost, for instance, like the gated community where they have the shared uh, services, huh? then it's better to, uh, to be owning a unit rather okay. than renting a unit. Okay. Yes. I break down this math for us, Peter. Hmm. Um, your cheapest unit, say, uh, for rentals, me, 22,000. 20,000. 20,000, right? 
how much do you buy it for? That's how how much does someone buy buy the apartment for? 2.4 million. 2.4 million. Yes. That's a studio apartment. Yes. Uh 2.4 million. If yeah. you have 2.4 million um at kwa money market mm-hmm. yeah 10% that's 240,000. So this means if you break down your math every month uh if you have 2.4 million in a money market fund you get 20,000, right? Yeah. 24. 20 24,000. Uh, 2.4 2. million. It's yeah. 20. In, as in, oh, at in, 10%. In per month. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. It's uh, 20,000 per yes. month. Right? Mm. Mm. Ah, goja. Here, apart- okay. Here apartment in a Ilibaiwa 2.7. The one bedrooms. Signed is Nenda. Uh, right now, they are going for 22. Yes. But when someone buys that, it's 4.5. Currently. Yes. The reselling, yes, that is the highest resale value we've seen. The lowest? The lowest has been at two at three point two. Three point two. Three point two. So let's go with your 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 three point two million uh, at ten uh, percent. Yes. So in a month, uh, just a second, three point two million. Uh, at 10 percent so uh, hmm. that gives us 26000 right so uh, if i was renting so me come and make a money market at 10 percent i'll be getting 26k guaranteed hmm. if um, i have a fixed return of 10 hmm. percent yani yeah. i jump up i jump down hmm. i get hmm. then i can pay you my rent rent here hmm. 20, 20, 22, 22. Nime back in a 4,000 okay. internet. Yes. For as long as I wish. Yes. And if I wanted to move to another apartment of yours, in a different place, uh, I still have my money, my 2.4. I don't have the hassle of uh, looking for a buyer, which you said mm-hmm. real estate is very illiquid. Mm-hmm. See, my money is there. Mm. In fact, I can access it if I want. Mm. But I have the freedom to move wherever I want. Yes. What's wrong with that mathematics? There's nothing wrong. When it gets to that point, it's choice. Eh? Mm. Of do I want to hold an asset? Or do which I want is to appreciating, be liquid? Or do I want to be liquid? So it's all about having an asset, which will appreciate in value and get to 4 million. Yeah. <coughs> it might be liquid, but will take a few can take six months to uh, have it liquid, liquidated, and this one is cash you have access to. So it's just a choice. Or choice, mm. an individual preference. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, join one of the uh, latest formats of investment is joint ventures. Yes. Before we talk uh, off plan, mm. joint ventures. Yes. What are the advantages of joint ventures? Um, I don't know, Kamani Ruaka. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ruaka, there is, I think, a phenomenon. Mm-hmm. There are people who had land. Mm-hmm. On Akuja, they get money. Mm-hmm. That's a different conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you get money from a developer, unenda, unatesa, mm, mm-hmm. give or take. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we also have, you have a piece of land. Mm-hmm. Is it a viable choice in terms of real estate investment? Like when someone has land, a prime piece of land, yes. you don't have the money to develop. Yes. How viable is the option of working with a developer? Mm-hmm. You co-own the building. Okay. Uh, I would say it's a very, very viable engagement, huh? the mm. joint venture, because uh, again, uh, there are various structures to the joint uh, on uh, venture. So uh, you'll have uh, that, the scenario that you have given, it was like an outright buy. Mm. It was not like a joint venture because a joint venture is uh, you as the developer and me as the landowner, we yes. come together. Mm-hmm. We form a special purpose vehicle uh, where we have shareholding each part of, uh, part, part of us. Mm-hmm. Then we agree on how we structure our joint uh, venture. We agree <coughs> on how we are owning this uh, mm-hmm. company or the SPV. So uh, again, depending from one developer to the other, you'll agree. So in most cases is that now uh, mm-hmm. you, your contribution as the landowner is the land. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. And then the developer is bringing in the expertise. And in return, for your value of land, you'll get X number of the units. Again, it varies on how you structure the joint venture because uh, in some scenarios, the landowner provides the land and also does some capital contribution, like a small portion of it. The landowner? In some scenarios, I'm saying, mm -hmm. they not only provide the land, but they also contribute, they say, because uh, if I'm just bringing the land, and you, you are bringing the expertise, I'll have X number of units. But can I bring in some more cash to get X plus one or two units? So it depends with how you structure. But at the end of the day, the value of the units, because now we are talking uh, uh, about the land, which is not built. But when now you're getting the units or your compensation for the land is in units, you're talking about a future value, with, which is a higher value compared to your, your, your value of land. So in most cases, you'll get that your compensation for land has earned you almost double the amount of money that you'd have sold. And this is not only a good thing you become, uh, you know, uh, especially for the landowners. I know people are more emotional about land and especially what we have seen in Nairobi. Mm. Uh, it's more of, uh, let me say, uh, land they don't want to let go uh, but they want to be part and parcel of that development. So you'll find that in those joint ventures that they are the majority shareholding in terms of the number they, they, they are owning, and they feel a part of, and parcel of that project, and they can uh, enjoy not only now getting the units as compensation, mm. but now it's land which has been translated into uh, an income which is being generated. Okay. Yes. So it's totally viable. Okay. Yes. So, Peter, thank you very much for um, actually um, endorsing endorsing real estate as viable project, yes, right? Yeah. And uh, you, as a company, were successful in off plan, yes, off plan. But then, when it comes to owning, like uh, owning a property, for the investors, money wanataka ku tukitoka kwa joint venture off plan mmekuwa successful but watu wameona moto sana kwa off plan sana haya Uki, ukiangalia strategies za investment kuna kitu imekuwa touted hapa sana type of real estate you're investing in right as we smooth yes. into off plan mm. right uh, what is your assessment of the Kenyan market kwanza before we get the type of real estate we invest in at Abila Kuyona. What is your assessment of the Kenyan market na, na in terms of the renter from the from an investor to a renter perspective? Mm -hmm. You told us like your investment yeah. kwa katikati kwa mm -hmm. watu wa middle, right? Yes. Uh, lower eco, middle. Uh, lower middle. Yeah. Tough economic nini wao yeah. wako wa, yeah. utapata watu wenye wanaanguka yeah. na wenye yeah. wanapanda. Yes. Ukwapa. Yes. What is your assessment of the general uh, real estate uh, sector in Kenya? Kwanza, tukienda, tukiangalia kwa, are there areas where it can work? Are there areas where it will never work? That is not the case, mm. per se, in terms of not working. Mm. Real estate is needed in each and every corner of Kenya. Mm -hmm. It works best in Nairobi because it has been favored by rural urban migration. We have uh, had more okay. people come this way. But now with even the devolved government system, system of government, mm. we, have, we are having people moving to counties. Mm. That's why you're seeing most of the county headquarters, the mm. towns uh, mm. and cities have started also picking up. Yes. Because real estate is the backbone of real estate is you and me, is migration, is people. You build a house, you need someone to occupy it, be it a tenant or to own it, that physical person to be inside there. Real estate in Kenya has really diversified mm. from the product we provide, from mm. people who sell land mm. to housing, it, is, uh, it has really diversified. Mm. And we have a lot of options of, the, the, of investing in real estate. You can buy a plot, a mashamba, uh, be it for personal reason, speculative reason, Mm. A bit for a holiday home outside mm. Nairobi, dependent on 
what real estate you're looking for. When we go to housing, you can buy a house first to live in as a home. Secondly, when it comes to an investment, you'll have your class. Do I want a high-end apartment, middle-end apartment or a low-end? Or a social housing? When we talk about social housing is where you're doing the real <coughs> end, mm. where you do, say, the Mabati houses mm. and uh, such like, or even stone where it is shared amenities. So the diversification is there. It's upon the type of investment you want to make. Okay. Yes. Now off plan. Uh, when is you it, go to is off plan. It, is it just for certain types of companies? Um, why do other people fail in off plan? So one thing about off plan, the key thing about off plan is transparency and discipline. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, bite what you can chew. So you've had people who have gone overboard in scaling of their projects. For example, at Amazia, we take in one project at a time and we set its time span or lifespan. So we say Amazia kicks off in 2023, will end in 2025. In this time, we want to have developed uh, X number of units. These, in this case at Amazia, there are 325. Mm. developed over a period of 24 months. So we are sure that we can chew what we are talking about. We, mm. have the we have the capacity. Secondly is the discipline. When you receive these funds from people, are you fully utilizing them in your development? Are they going directly to the project? Or do you have the scenario where you start saying, because I'm a director there, or we have a technical team, where we should add, uh, say, an, a liability like a motor vehicle. Don't divert the funds. If they are purely to come and buy cement and chuma and stones, aggregate for building that development, let them go directly there. Have that discipline. Okay. Uh, thirdly is teamwork. Who are involved in this project? Who's your team? Do they understand the delivery of the project? Now, for the for the person investing, yes. uh, for those who've been uh, for those who are interested in investing in um, an off plan uh, house, yes, right? How do they know that? Okay, we cannot real estate. Do you? Can you guarantee based on track record alone? Yes, because you can. think about it. Uh, there are certain changes. Kama be ya chuma sana sana changes. It's only human that ukiona it will affect your profit. Somehow you may be bound to compromise on something, either size or of what you agreed on. Kitu kama you just tweaking. Or now you can do a tweak and be innovative and use technology. So move away from uh, the normal brick and mortar. Go to precast technology. It will save you. Go to EPS technology. It will save you. So it's also upon you as the developer to be flexible, to tweak your construction to get that saving. Mm -hmm. So move away from the normal chuma mezoya slabi kikunjo chuma and ukoroge. Why don't you go and buy pre-stressed beams? Mm. Okay. You've saved your cost by 40%, 20 to 40%. So you've gotten that saving. So you're saving the person buying from you. Track record is the one key thing that makes off plan successful. This developer started this project completed. You can visit the development and see what is its nature. If there was compromise even in quality, you can tell. They had said they would apply wall master, akapaka nusu, yoengine aka paint. There is compromise there, but look at also the quality of the finished development. So okay. track record is the best way for an off plan to work. Okay. Where, where, what have they done? Where are they headed to? Okay. If you look at the developments we've done, we started with smaller sized units. Right now at Amazia, we had 40% larger units and still in the in the uh, in the in still in our pricing range we haven't gone all up we haven't moved from the 2.7 or 3 million to 5 million we are still at 3.5 uh 
before Helen explains to us how much house someone can afford, I'm at the decision uh, making process here. Oh, I can afford this house. Let me uh, go into this. Uh, how do you calculate profit margin as an investor? Like, let's say, for example, I want to do an off plan project, right? Mm. How do I know I'm qualified to run a project? Uh, because number two, uh, off plan is based on contributions, right? So if people don't contribute as you anticipated, you're stuck. If you're stuck, you're going to mess up the people who paid in full versus the people who are paying in installments. How do you make sure you deliver uh, even without everybody contributing at 100%, am I at the same pace? And how do you calculate your profit margins? Come on, like if you have to advise me as an investor, Nataka kuenda kuanzisha my off-plan project. Depends on the profit. Do you want to hold it? Do you want it to be capped on the development where you will make money? Or will you translate this to retaining units in that development? So you, that's the first choice you have to make. Do I want to Which make 100 best? million? from this building I'm doing after I've sold, or do I want to retain units? Depends on your nature of investments. Are you looking at long-term cash is now, you'll have it, and you'll manage to do another thing on the side. So that's long how term, mathematics is done. Yeah, long-term, you'll hold. You'll say I have assets worth 100 million, I'm getting rent worth 10 million, and that's per month what you're collecting, say for example, or five million. Mm. That is long term. So you'll be guaranteed and assured that you have that liquidity, but in a lower rate of a monthly uh, payments of five million versus the a hundred million. As in that's how mathematics is done in this sense. I, think, oh, um, I want to build 70 units, but in this building, let's say it's for selling, mm. I want to make 50 million. So every other thing you start working backwards. No, not necessarily that you set up a price that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a business you are in. So you have to look that when I do this construction, I've paid my technical team, I've mm -hmm. done the construction. Mm -hmm. uh, what is left? How much would I have made? Mm -hmm. Say right now you're earning in your normal business, it's bringing you a million bob. So you'll do this development as profit. In a normal business, you're getting a million shillings. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's a business just like any other. Mm. You have to have a profit on top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for, for if you are consulting for someone, yes. someone who wants to build their own home yes. or someone who wants to invest, mm. how do you know, um, how do you determine how much house you can afford? This comes from the place of, mm -hmm. Sawa, uh, let's say I can afford to raise... Uh, 100,000 every month, mm -hmm. 200,000 every month. Mm -hmm. But then again, what if I have, what's the balance between I have faith mm -hmm. that I can do a project na half a million up and belly. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have people who say, building is not about lump sum, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Building is starting with the small that you have. Mm -hmm. But how big do you go with the small that you have? Okay, before I answer your question, let mm -hmm. me add to that question that you had asked on the success of an off planner and mm. Peter mentioned about transparency. Mm. Let me add, say, uh, like any other developer, like yes. challenge, challenges will be there. Mm. But now narrows down to uh, how effectively do you communicate mm. uh, with people who have a uh, trusted view with their money, mm. like we had the likes of rains. Sometimes maybe you have promised a be done with this project in nine months, but there, there are rains and you don't want to compromise on uh, quality. That means you have to slow down at, at some point. So it narrows down to the transparency that you have to, uh, we, do co we do communicate or you have to communicate with people who have bought. Huh? So that it, like they, they are, they, with the communication, they are at par with how you're progressing with the project. Okay. Now, when it comes to now the question of, uh, your income and now do i buy do i build my first question to such a person is uh where uh, if i'm assuming you are asking from a point of now when they are building it's like they're building a a a, a, a large house huh, where mm. they want to live is mm. that the mm. scenario yes, yes, yes yeah my first question to that person becomes to uh with this uh, where have you envisioned to live so that comes to the cost of land in that place. 
uh, would you still want to live in that place 20, uh, 25 uh, years to come? And in most cases, the, uh, the answer is no. Their preferences will have shifted. That's guaranteed. That's a guaranteed. Uh, and this, uh, the example will be like, uh, uh, some time back, uh, Buruburu and other areas, uh, uh, they were very prime location, people built, but now we have seen Mtu anakuja na kujenga gorofa his side, and anajenga gorofa privacy. Yes. privacy, and then you have to sell that asset and move maybe place karibu na ushago. Uh, so, uh, and especially the fact of age, uh, in 20, uh, let's work with 20, 25 years, would you still want to live in the same place where you want to <coughs> purchase that parcel of ranch right now? So if the answer is no, uh, maybe your dream house is eventually to be at current and, and everything, then my answer comes to uh, you better invest first in the rental and then uh, by then you'll have built a portfolio of uh, this rental income which will actually build you that house. Instead of using that money to build that house right now, why don't you build a portfolio right now and using this portfolio it, uh, through the rental income or mm. even borrowing against that portfolio will be able to build your dream home come then. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. so it's uh, not a question of how much you can afford, but because we have seen now uh, with the less, with the, uh, you're not limited in terms of the amount of money mm. because Peter will tell you with our off-plan uh, projects, huh? we have seen a scenario where your monthly payments are uh, as low as 65000 and that's for the studio because you are uh, actually the, uh, in this particular project, the down payment was 200,000, then 65,000 over a period of 30 months. So uh, it's not limited uh, on the amount of money. You can start building small with the small that you have and then uh, eventually be able to build that uh, dream home. Okay. Yes. Okay. I understand. Something keeps coming up, like oh, once you buy. Uh, a property, your money comes, uh, it gets managed, right? How much ownership do you have when you participate in a project? In this sense, how much freedom over your property do you have as an investor? I've heard of estates that come with, uh, you invest, you put money together, alafu, it comes with stringent laws that you even as a person, you would not even live there, right? When you sell a property that is not a single unit, how much freedom comes with owning? Is it like an embassy that uh, when someone plays loud music, that's their own world, they own that space in the air, whatever? Because we have criticism here, people who buy apartments on Androngo, Unanunua, Hewa. How do you respond to that? Uh, say from what we've developed, our target is really investors, uh, where you buy the apartment from us, we manage it on your behalf, and we do the letting on your behalf. Mm. When you come to the scenario of home ownership, mm. I believe uh, externally in the development, you can't interfere. But internally, if it is your own house, you can interfere with it. Not structurally per se, but the improvements you can do inside. You might uh, change the type of color schemes and everything. Mm. That gives you that freedom to make the space homely enough for you. Mm -hmm. When we come to the, what you'd call now, as you're saying, who umenunu apartment iko kwa hewa, that is not correct. Because currently now in Kenya, under the new laws, you can get your sectional property title for that apartment, which is in the air, which will be located using GPS. That is how you get there. It's real positioning, index positioning in a map of the so apartment. So Google Maps can take you to house yes. number 23B. Yes. Mm. So that is how, and you'll also have a paper showing a title showing that you own that specific apartment. Mm -hmm. That is as uh, much as comes to a yes. development. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Ah, okay. So now when it comes to construction costs, uh, what have you learned over the years in your uh, I'm planning. People always talk about a surprise. Like you, it never, is there budgeting in construction costs that actually is realistic? Is it ever realistic? Yes, it is. How? You have to first, uh, when doing any development, 
have a technical team, an architect, an engineer, these are structural engineer, and a QS. They will give you the basis of the cost of that house. Mm -hmm. Any shift which will be there would be in the material. So also how to come up, uh, say price of uh, cement has gone up or steel. <coughs> how mm -hmm. to counter that? Do early purchases when the prices are still right and buy in bulk. You can lock a price. Say if you it can is steel, lock a price. Yes, if it is steel, mm -hmm. uh, visit the manufacturer, lock your price, mm -hmm. get your discount and lock your price. Pay upfront or partial money to them. Mm -hmm. That way it will help you when there is a shift be it in dollar or just pricing of say clean cut to affect the cement, mm. you will still maintain your original price. That's Secondly, a thing in the sector. Yes, that's okay. a big thing in the sector. Secondly, get different and various suppliers. It's not a good idea to have someone who no. supplies you kila kitu no. so that you can all have no. all your payments centralized. No. Diversify. Have if it is sand have 20 suppliers of sand. What's the science behind that? Each will have their own price and their prices will be affected by small things. The truck which person A will deliver you uh, to you sand with maybe is of a different manufacturing where it's consuming more fuel. So he'll put in that pricing aspect for you there. Person B will be lower. Also, where they are sourcing from. One will be coming from 90 kilometers away to your site. One will be coming from 75. So their pricing won't be the same. Yeah. But if you stick to, say, the one coming from 90 kilometers, you'll always pay higher price for sand than the closer supplier. So wait. So the 20 suppliers, it's not like the 20 suppliers are supplying you. No. You choose from 20. Yes. You can have an array. When you want sand to come in, say you want to do plastering, and you want specifically river sand. That's the quality you want to work with. You have 20 people who you can call who you know supply river sand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. Mm. Ah, okay. Sawa, sawa. Now, I'm comfortable. You guys are comfortable with the return on investment at 8 to 10 percent? Very much comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, what we are working on eh, is even about now how. Uh, how do we do improvements? Because our target is the investor. Yes. How can we incorporate all these, in, uh, all those uh, improvements around our, our development, huh? yes. so that now, uh, let's say after a year, we are able to increase the rent, uh, the rent prices. Huh? So after what, a year, you increase the rent uh, prices. The rent of prices again, uh, dependent on various things huh? and uh, even the market and all that. Huh? So once we increase the rent prices, that means even our return will uh, go higher mm -hmm. compared to what we have. So our question is now uh, with the interest, uh, with the interest, the rate that we are getting now, uh, we continuously do the improvement. Because now uh, with increasing the rent prices, you have to match it with something. Uh, it, have you done uh, these improvements and all that? There's a basis of your incremental uh, rent. Mm -hmm. So once we increase the rent, we're also uh, able to increase the, the, the rental income. But again, our core um, issue is around <coughs> sustainability for our investors because we manage the tenants. So uh, again, I'll be, go back to my analysis and say, if I increase this rent by X amount and the tenant moves out, would, uh, would, would it be better for my investor to have this 20, uh, uh, 20K for the 12 months or increase the rent to 25,000 and then I get a tenant, they move up uh, uh, five months after and then it becomes difficult to get a replacement for uh, that income. So there will be an opportunity cost if uh, I increase it to that extent. So even with the increased uh, interest rate, uh, we not uh, we don't also don't promise an eight percent to twelve percent. It has to be gradual. We have to do our math and see what is uh, feasible, especially with the uh, current market rates and the improvements that we continuously do. Okay. Yes. What's the threshold for me to need a property manager? Uh, peace of mind. 
peace of mind uh, and convenience peace of mind how and uh, convenience peace of mind in this sense you have an apartment block has 70 units mm. you have to handle 70 different types of cases mm -hmm. or issues yes mm -hmm. so you need someone to help you coordinate it efficiently and very functionally mm. a property manager when they come in they come in with the expertise under them of having say a facility manager or what we call caretakers most facility managers like in my case mm. or in our case or in our developments you find that the facility manager has undergone training for technical two technical things that is plumbing and electrical so where we have these small issues where we have a plumbing issue or an electrical issue which is not major you expect and anticipate that the facility manager will pick up this issue effectively and handle it so but in your I, case mm. you're layman you don't know you've been called by person a they have a leak person b there is an elect there is, my bulbs are not going on by the time you coordinate get the electrician they have already called you another 10 20 times mm. reminding you the electrician whom you are relying on is somewhere else by the time they get to the facility to the to your house if they have taken 5 to 10 hours so also that turn around time of what, what, resolving what, these issues if i know that's the problem mm. uh, how about if i solve it like so that i can eat all that money because of uh, to enjoy my hard work then that will just mean you have to employ a cleaner you'll have to employ a plumber you'll mm. have to employ an electrician mm -hmm. yeah yes so this will eat into your rental income so uh, it's more expensive to employ those people than yes. to have someone to employ someone to employ them. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Because uh, as uh, because you are, you want to establish and say that uh, when you come to me as a property manager, I've employed them. I'm passing on the cost to you, but I have another fifty establishments which I'm taking care of. So mm -hmm. I've spread the cost. Ah, yeah. so that's the mathematics. Yes. So you are able to reduce. Yes, the cost. So when you employ an electrician at thirty thousand, I will employ the same electrician, the same caretaker having that electrical background and plumbing black background will come in when you have had your people and say you spend a hundred thousand on those salaries. I will come in and provide you the same at forty thousand. Mm, so that's the yeah. value proposition. Yes. Ah. Manzi, asante ni sana uh, for sharing your insights with us. Uh, I, I would only be curious to know, Kama, yes, you've given us the examples. Yes. Uh, the, oh, you can start with uh, X amount of money for down payment for real estate. Uh, we can all agree that you cannot save your way to real estate investment. Sindio, alone for the most part. If, you're, if you don't have discipline. There are disciplined people who save, save through circles go borrow in a circle and come and invest. You're diversifying your portfolio. Okay. So you have your savings and now you get into real estate. Okay. And that's for select few uh, discipline. Yes. So kwa mutu mwenye, is there a threshold? Like, uh, let's say uh, an example. Most Kenyans, over 50% of Kenyans earn, over 50% of Kenyans learn, earn less than 50,000 per month. Yes. Do these people have a, a, can they dare to dream to own a home? Wachana na affordable housing. Enye bado bado ni betting. Right? Yes. Can these people dream to be in real estate? Sure, for sure. Uh, and the example I'll go back to me, uh, the room to a 50K, uh, let's say uh, uh, the needs are akili per rent, I buy food, na alipe bus fare let's say anabaki na kitu 10k hiyo ndio anaweza save akiwa comfortable apate mm. food apate rent na amekita for bus fare mm. so for the 10k namwambia uh, anaweza ako na options kadhaa haya anaweza save uh, and that's why the discipline na kuja a save a save kwa sako so it's a dream 
so again si atianza saa hii so anaweza save so hiyo itakuwa ni 120 uh, a year a year so in the following year in 5 years time atapata uh, ama at 3 years time <coughs> anapata in most cases uh, sako wanakupatia uh, there are some sako yeah. i understand they even give 5 uh, 6 times ya, ya ile do Mm, yeah so yes, yes, yeah yes. so akipata hiyo do let's say in 4 years amepata uh, in 4 years itakuwa bila kuhesabu compounding that's 500 let's let's see 600 yes. so if they give uh, uh, five times uh, so that's 3 million ah yeah yeah yes yes amepata yes, 3 yes. million amekuja ameshika one bed and then he one bed iko na rental income so that means kulipa hii loan ya ya sako mm. hiyo rental income ndio atachukua inde imsaidie si alikuwa na ile 10k yake mm. ile 10k yake plus hii rental income yenye tunasema ya 20k mm. uh, ampata 30k ya kulipa yes. hiyo that uh, hiyo loan yes, yes so again pia unaona mm-hmm. hiyo disprince yet atakuwa na guza hiyo rental income but ako na asset mm. ako na asset na hii asset ina income ya kumsaidia ku repay that loan my kienyeji mathematics uh-huh. eh tukihesabu loan ya 3 million uh-huh. na interest rate flat yeah. ya 12% uh-huh. na si reducing balance yes. inakuja 70,000 per month for 4 uh-huh. years yeah for four unaona kidogo ina muuma nje eh, okay ina muuma nje but na assume huyu mtu pia jo ni mtu ambitious in 4 years time atakuwa kwa ile salary ya ya ya, ya 50000 oh. atakuwa amepanda because ni mtu ambitious let's agree that mm-hmm. so let's say mm-hmm. atakuwa in every 2 years uh, for someone who is ambitious they are supposed to double their income every every 2 years you are supposed you meant to double your income if you are truly ambitious ambitious so ukiona okay, umemaliza 2 years, two years on the same salary the same salary that means kuna vitu zako you, you need to work on on your ambition really yes that's the case okay yes okay. so every two years uh, it's either on the wrong job ama hayuko ambitious if in every two years you don't double your double salary. Your, in, your income not necessarily in, at income or income si yes. salary yes. do yote yenye una make yes ujue either you are in the wrong career ama unafanya whatever business uh, haiendi hai vizuri so you are supposed to change your career or something in every two years there's a problem mm. if you don't double your income exactly na income means all the sources that e, bring e, you money yes yes so in uh, at actually by the time anafika tunafika hiyo four years ya kupewa loan anafa kwa income yake imesonga mm. so ata pay down na less time Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, so that's okay. uh, that's that one option. The other option ile kama ile nilikuwa nasema ya chama. Especially like Sako they are very supportive with the chama. Mm. So unapata uh, uh, wako watu watatu so in a month wana contribute 30k. Mm. So uh, wa ata hiyo by year 2 wana access the loan and they get the loan they purchase the uh, the unit and mm. then they are able to repay that loan and again watakuwa wame double their income so they are able to repay down that loan okay. very easily and okay. they get that extra income okay yeah okay. so again it's a uh, discipline ambition uh, na ku think long term because kuna mtu anasema uh, by the time nalinunua hiyo nyumba inafaa kuwa na enjoy hiyo nyumba okay yeah but kama umepata finance ni mahali kwingine that means hiyo income inafaa ende kukusaidia kulipe down that uh, finance ni umepata and you're very categorical sako not bank uh, well it depends also with the relationship huh? because a few uh, there's a way you can cultivate the relationship with your banks nimeona kuna banks especially who are supporting women Mm. and all that kuna hizo um, Facility. facilities for Special women uh, women who are in business and all that but uh, as firm as I'm concerned and also their interest if you compare the bank interest and uh, circle interest uh, interest za circle ziko chini kuliko za bank yes okay yes. okay haya sawa sawa pita unaweza tufungia na history ya kujenga mansion ushago ni dead asset bila siri ni ku tie down your capital si ati uko na place ya kwenda ku unwind ya hapana cost of maintaining it we earlier on spoke about the how to gauge if unataka kuchukua mortgage mm. itabidi uemploy watu wangapi groundskeeper mtu akuichunga 
done it leaner so it will still be a liability in terms of ile pesa unaitumia kuioperate operational costs za hiyo nyumba mm. yeah when they come to think of it utapata ukilipa mm. mzee wa garden yeah. fair price inaweza kuwa yeah. kama much 20k ukiongeza hadi chakula oh cost mm. ya ku maintain hapo eh, nasema mm. huyo garden na 20000 yes. utaongea kuhusu cleaner mwenye anaingia na safisha mm. three times a week so you're talking about another 15 to 20000 huyo garden na kwa garden wataingia kwa nyumba na uchafu eh. Eh utakuwa na, na security mm. uochi ah security yeah. ndio if tena watu wasia isi kuwe vandalized mm. yeah mm. utafanya nyumba yenye hauishi ndani it the tear and wear is higher than yenye unaishi ndani yeah nyumba yenye hauishi ndani the tear and wear is higher yeah. than nyumba yenye yeah so maintenance repairs zitakuwa much more okay okay yeah. okay Yeah. So those are some of the things costs which will come in into maintaining that house Ushago. So how much house should one have in Ushago? Have a house which is functional. Okay. Okay. If you have a family, you need a four bedroom, have it functional. A bungalow, a functional house okay. where you can live and it is easy to maintain it. Yes. Okay, okay. Asante. And and also maybe kwa uh, the functionality tumeona the approach like kuna watu pia wanaeka hizo nyumba ushago lakini anafanya value add anaeka vitu kama uh, Airbnb. Mm. So the moment huyu yuko huko ushago hiyo nyumba bado ina generate income. Okay. Yeah, so it's also another approach yeah. Yeah. Ya, ya, ya value addition and also on the unit that uh, uh, there's a question ulikuwa umeuliza rent here ya 20 uta increase aje mm. so as an investor you also not limited naweza unit yangu badala ni kuna rent ya 20000 i can mm. do some value addition mm. and then let it as furnished so as furnished i ta let a rental income so hiyo ni tulikuwa tunachukua like an average uh, tenant yenye huna hiyo uh, hustle and all that mm. but you can do the value addition and uh, your return it it end due exponentially okay okay yes. You allowed uh, you are one of the property managers when you will come allow Airbnb in your properties do you still do it yes we do haya ah, in which case um rental income for Airbnb on average wana charge how much kwa for a one bedroom 3000 3000 a day ndio yeah uh, so inamaanisha at let's assume hesabu tu ya yeah. at 100 hii nyumba ni ya rent yeah. na 22k yeah. but uh, at 100% occupancy because yeah. we have people who, who rent airbnb yeah. long term yeah. uh, 30 days that's 90000 yes per month ndio mm-hmm. eh uh, why would you forgo nyinyi mkuwe mzee wa kezote airbnb mkuwe mnakula 90000 per month on every unit rather than renting them out for 22000 also the aspect of uh, managing the airbnb and marketing the airbnb also mm. the capital expenditure on furnishing the houses oh. just furnishing one of those one bedrooms mm. is a cost of say half a million ah uh, for you to rent yes, it out at 3k to rent it out at 3000 okay so okay. those are the simple things that we have looked at oh bado tutarudi kwa the amount mm-hmm. of money yes, invest yes ah okay capex yako so uliongeza on top of the house ukaongeza another half a million ya yeah. kuifurnish so ukipiga tu hesabu bado hii yeah. 90000 itakurudisha yeah. kwa the same percentage yes. Yes. ya ku rent out na yes. at 22000 yes ah interesting yeah. Mm. Uh, beautiful conversation from my end asante sana for sparing your time to share your knowledge with us i personally enjoyed the conversation thank you too for having asante us sana. asante yeah, asante yeah. asante sana for tuning in i hope you enjoyed our content i trust this was time well wasted please feel free to subscribe to our content we have a lot of good vibes already uploaded on the channel we have so much more coming through unaweza like share subscribe do good vibes if you kill mtu and as many people as possible we expand the family to spread knowledge as wide and to any corners and to all corners of the world otherwise asante sana i'm your host dr kingori see you on the next one